This is a HeadGum Podcast. I'm Kayla. I'm Mel. And I'm super excited because this weekend uh, was really great. I was at Walker Stalker and got to see a few panels with the cast. It was really amazing. And I got an episode where I didn't cry. So, yeah. (laughs) I know. We actually laughed in a good way. I was really feeling this episode. I know some people might have found it boring, but I, I really enjoyed watching it. I think we it. all needed this. We all did. <laughs> yeah. After last week. We all needed yeah. this. Yeah, I saw Jeffrey Dean Morgan. I was like, you. Like, just like looking at him in person. I'm like, you're a bastard. But you're not. Like, I know you're really not. Like, you just play one on TV, but you're a bastard. So, I, I needed a break from someone just being an all-out evil person. Um, which is really cool with the contrast between the new character that was introduced this week and his character and what we got to see last week. So, um, yeah, what were your feelings on the new character introduced? Well, I, before that, I just wanted to say greetings to our fair listeners because I feel like I'm feeling run fair right now. I'm feeling very run fair right now. <laughs> trying not to slip into some old English because of this episode. I mean... Best entrance ever. Just reclining on his throne with with the dreads, with the friggin' tiger at his side. Oh my god. That's some Game of Thrones shit. I mean, that was that was a legit entrance. I loved yeah, it. I tweeted and I was like, yes, this is very Tyrion and Barriss and I'm like, yes. Like, I mean, they is... wish they could be that smooth with it. <laughs> <laughs> they wish. <laughs> they wish. <laughs> I really loved his dialogue, um, and I read the comics. So I was really, I was more excited about Eze- Ezekiel being introduced than the Negan, um, only because it's going to be a really good contrast in the characters. Um, and of course, I saw some tweets tonight, and I felt I was in my feelings because of things that had happened at Walker Stalker, so I was really snappy today, and someone tweeted, like, well, you guys don't read the comics. I was like, you know what? That's irrelevant, but goodbye. And that was it. Never heard from that person again. Like, I made them feel stupid for, like, all of 30 minutes, and I was like, yay! So- <laughs> and this is why I stopped tweeting speculation, because every time I do, somebody has to say, well, this is what happened in the comics. I'm like, I didn't tweet that so you can tell me what happened in the comics. I tweeted it because I'm just curious And I'm speculating, you know, as we do when we watch shows that we like. I feel like the the fan interaction between, and we talked about this last week, between the comic book readers and people that don't, like, it's fine. You're going to be obnoxious. Um, Be obnoxious at home, not on Twitter. Um, Especially on a hashtag where we're going to see it. Do not use Dim Dead saying, you guys don't read the comics because I'll come for you. I'm now on the lookout for you all. <laughs> your morning. And I will come at you and I'll start using old English. So let's go. <laughs> I'm going to be talking like that tomorrow at work. So <laughs> come hither. <laughs> come hither, fair maiden. <laughs> and partake of this pomegranate. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Oh, God. So let's talk about Carol. <laughs> Carol and um, her continuing issues. <laughs> and and I, that is something that I, I, I tweeted this as, as well. I have to remind myself at times that Carol has a domestic abuse mentality. And 
just has a hard time in the world that they're living in to accept the fact that they're if something is actually good and good for you um I think that's her problem and I think a lot of people get mad at her and I'm one too but then I have to go back and remind myself that um she had some really crazy moments this episode. yeah um, I, and she, she kind of went over, over the deep end and like overcompensating for her past like before she had no power over what was happening to her and then she had all the power <laughs> of what was happening to her and the group and now she's just taking a moment to sit back and think i am responsible for killing a whole bunch of people and then that's kind of insane that, yeah she i think she knows that a lot of what has happened has been her fault um because her ass don't know how to stay in one spot and just be a, you know just be and I feel like her relationship with Morgan um, has been a positive thing for her and it has allowed her she's starting to come out and realize that okay maybe I do need to chill like I need a chill pill but it's going to take some time, and I think uh, Ezekiel's going to help with that. <laughs> <laughs> Showed up at her door with the pomegranate. I mean, and like, tiger. Yeah. Pomegranate was, and chill. <laughs> oh, my God. Pomegranate and chill. Oh, my word. <laughs> oh, Mel, why? <laughs> yes, I am leaning against that door. <laughs> it's the way he did, like, yo. Like, I know I got this bad dread wig on right now. Struggle dreads. <laughs> like That's why they're better wigs though. I I I uh, I'm so sick of black people getting horrible wigs on TV shows. Oh my god, everybody in that show who wears wig it's horrible. They're really it's, bad with the wigs. <laughs> I don't understand. You uh, uh, oh. I think all of their budget goes to blood and guts. And then, you know, I, what's I, left over goes to wigs. But as somebody said on Twitter, they were like, you're in Atlanta. Like, somebody could hook you up. This is the lace front, like, capital of the world. So you're telling me that you can't find somebody to find you a good lace front dread? Like, or, or just something. <laughs> like, just Lord, Jesus, fix it. Because y'all aren't doing anybody any favors by... I, these wigs, like I can't. My my nerves aren't built for the wigs. <laughs> well, it wasn't as bad as Jesus's wig. His wig was so bad. It's so uh, bad. Like the wig, the beard. Do we have to talk about him? Oh, okay. <laughs> no, I'm just saying I have so many feelings about him and just his whole like person. Like screw you. Like, it's like I keep forgetting about him except for the wig. The wig I can't good. forget about that. It's it's ingrained in my mind. It's not going away. It was like a How to Get Away with Murder season one wig. It was so bad. Mm. Like, mm, mm. I'm glad they fixed it. They realized on How to Get Away with Murder. They're like, oh, oh, black people are coming for us. Let's fix this. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Walking Dead will get it one day. Um, but, I don't, I don't know. We'll see. But, I mean, Carol seems open to it. I, and the end of the episode was, was really good. I, I liked the ending for me. Um, and her storyline for, for the episode. I really did like it. Um, and, of course, that scene with her and Ezekiel and talking. Um, when he dropped the act and she dropped her act. Yeah, I, there's just the pulling of the Oz curtain, you know, I, I really, like, it's just, mm -hmm. like, I'm such a big Wizard of Oz fan, so whenever I see anything, like, someone dropping the persona of, oh, I came in and I was this savior trope, um, it's just, that's what it was, and I was like, huh, really? Okay, <laughs> I'll see you. I had some, I was scared where the episode was going, because there was that singing, and I was like, yo. Ryan Murphy directed and wrote this, didn't he? <laughs> I was waiting for them, to, somebody to pull out a loot. I was waiting for it. Oh my god! 
or a nice oh. little guitar, a nice or little something, like an acoustic like, solo. And like, I can't, I, I can't utterly wrap my mind around the fact that that scene happened. It was very unnecessary. I get that they were going to show like, oh, it's the kingdom and they're great. Until you saw that they are cold-blooded. Oh my god. Can we talk about how cold-blooded they are when it comes to Negan's people? Does that count as cold-blooded, though? Because I feel like Negan's people deserve all the horrible things that happen oh, no, to no, them. Oh, no, 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 that's the thing. I, I feel like that's it. justice. I feel like they're doing justice right there. I just, oh, God. I was like, you choke I... on that rotten meat, all of you. Oh, my God, that's so They're gross. doing God's work, <laughs> They are. No, you know what they're doing? They're doing Bob's work. Bob's <laughs> warm, y'all. <laughs> he said it is tainted meat. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Not God's work. Me. Bob's work from the grave. <laughs> so. Oh, my God. <laughs> I mean, we miss you, Bob. We do. <laughs> but yeah, that was a smart thing for them to do. Getting the meat I, I all was disgusting. <laughs> Yeah, I was very, very, very much so impressed with that scene and, and the storyline. And, you know, and Negan people. And they have their hooks we'll in everybody. I know, right? Like, they are, like, diversifying their... Like, I didn't know you could diversify during the apocalypse, but they figured out how to do so. So, kudos to y'all. Like... <laughs> Congratulations! Oh you my, did someone it. tweeted that Negan's people are basically student loans. I'm like, that is so true. They can always find you, and they'll take everything that they can from you. Fucking Sally Mae! Like I, uh, mm, mm, mm. <laughs> mm. my 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 heart. Like I, mm. I mean, yeah. nothing puts the fear in you like Sally Mae does when they call you. <laughs> so Sally Mae says you. Someone also tweeted that, like, uh, Neg- they posted a picture of Negan smiling with Mom from Futurama, and I was like, it's the same person. It's <laughs> like, cold and heartless. Like, <laughs> no. <laughs> but this, this episode, it just showed how society can work. And, I mean, I, I'm glad. I hope it does. Yeah, and I'm... <laughs> Someone tweeted and I know it. Rick gonna come in there and just blow that place to fucking pieces. Like, because I was like Carol, I was like, I want to believe this is legit, but we've been through so much shit that I can't even look at this and think you guys are. Oh, I was like, what do you do? Do you have like little kids buried in the basement? What is it that's happening here? Alexandria Terminus. I'm about over it and finding. And then I and then I thought I was like, if I show up, if I find myself in a place called the Kingdom. At first, I'm gonna look for straight jackets because obviously people are nuts. But I would just feel uncomfortable because that's that's quite a name, an expectation to put on a place. And if mm-hmm. that expectation, if you don't live up to that expectation, I'm out. Where I I agree with Carol, like I'm going to bounce. I don't necessarily have time for this. So I don't know. I think if I showed up at a place called the Kingdom and they let me be a knight and gave me a horse and some weapons and some armor, I'd be like, yes! <laughs> I'm totally with you. No, but then there's the tiger. Okay, and then there's like... Can a, I pet the tiger? <laughs> Probably not. They're saying it's Sheba, but it's actually Shiva. Like, that's what she said. Mm-hmm. I was like, you guys, don't don't get mad. Because like, then people started, they're like, no, nah, it's Shiva. No, it's Shiva. Like she's a goddess. I just wanted to know how the hell he caught a tiger. And I'm glad he told the story. Otherwise, they could have left that shit a mystery. And I would have been mad for the next four or five seasons. Like, where did the tiger come from? <laughs> but I respect the tiger and all its glory. Um, but you can't show up at my... You can't show up at my door with, with a tiger. And not expect questions to be asked. Yeah, so, like I said, if you show up at my door with a tiger and a pomegranate, I'm in a, you know, the apocalypse, and I ain't had any in a while. Pomegranates? <laughs> any pomegranates are coffee? I don't know. Just invite you in. Come on. Let's have coffee by the fire. 
<laughs> I mean, I can kind of get where you need your own space. Carol has been through so much. She's lost a husband, even though he was an asshole. She's lost a daughter. She's lost the rest of her group, people that she's been with mm-hmm. since the beginning. So having someone to attach to, even though she's attached herself to Morgan. Has she attached herself to Morgan like or has I'll Morgan just stuck to her? Morgan is your grandpa. Uh, he's the grandpa, like, I've always wanted, like, to be completely, like, honest. Like, because he's like, hey, I'm going to check up on you. How you doing? And that's what I want. <laughs> and so, God, I don't have that from grandpa. I know that's horrible to say, but no. <laughs> so, I just, I, I feel like, yes, that's what he is. I don't know if she's necessarily, like you said, attached him, herself to him, but... I know that he's definitely attached himself to her. He wants to check in on her. And I think she needs to attach herself to someone who's not related to her past and moves forward. So I'm, you know, I think I'm on the bandwagon of shipping them. And I think he understands um, where she's coming from. So I think that's going to help a lot. I mean, they've both been in that place Mm -hmm. where, you know, I kind of went overboard with the killing and then I... I really regretted it, and I regretted my life decisions. And this is where I came out on the other side. And she has to figure out where she's going to come out on the other side. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I can, I can agree with that. Um, was there anything else in this episode that kind of stood out to you? I was just... The whole, like, her overkill scenes. Like, she was, like, my hero. She's like, oh, can you give me a tissue? I'm going to steal these clothes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god <laughs> it's so jarring each time <laughs> she does that helpless you know housewife thing it's so jarring because it's it's because you know her past and it's like okay well damn is she really helpless no she's just that carol again darn you yeah it's just like that so i mean she's a mess and a half but we love her. And- but that goes back to what you're saying before about her being, you know, a domestic abuse survivor because you have to learn how to do that. Yeah. Definitely. I mean, there's no other way, I think, to kind of survive the stuff that she's been through if she hasn't put that mentality. She still has that mentality. Um, that's why I think she attached herself to Daryl as hard as she did. Um and you were ever, me watching that when she was attaching herself to Daryl's like no don't do that <laughs> don't no no ma'am I think it's kind of sweet <laughs> mm. I mean Daryl like coming back with his ear necklace after looking for her kid <sighs> <laughs> yeah You're like, Mel, no. Stop. I don't know. (laughs) No pomegranate and chill with Daryl. I don't know where my contempt for Norma Reedus comes from. Like, I really don't. I feel like it's probably the fandom. (laughs) It's the fandom because you want to talk about, okay, Walker Stalker. There was a, like, huge ass line just to see him. Like, to do, like, a photo op. And it was, like, literally the length of a floor at at a convention center. And I'm like, you know what? No. No. No, we're not. I'm going to go sit my happy ass down and watch Teresa and Sasha and, and, and just have a good time. I'm not going to wait. And apparently they have been waiting in line oh, for no. five hours. And I was like, <laughs> he ain't worth it. No. I actually, I've met Norman Reedus, but this was like after the first season mm-hmm. of Walking he Dead. Still- and he wasn't even, I, I, he was at Dragon Con, but he wasn't really there for Walking Dead. He was there for Boondock Saints 2. Uh-huh. So then I met him and I got my picture taken with him and it was like 20 bucks. And we had an entire, like a 20 minute conversation about bubble gun. Okay. And I was like, this was nice that I got this out of my system <laughs> before and things got hectic. That's my thing though. What made me so mad about that experience this weekend was like, they were all charging $80. And I was like, you know what? <laughs> I, was, I was like, for eighty dollars, you better call my grandmother and give her the secrets of life. Like, not for like just anybody. Like, and not, 
And there are people going to each one. I'm like, you're dropping me. That's a lot of money. I don't have time for that. 80 bucks, like, we better go get dinner. And you're paying exactly. for it. Exactly. <laughs> what is happening right now? Um, I don't like anybody. I don't like anybody $80 worth. And I don't like anybody five hours in line worth. Mm -mm. No, I'm trying to think of anybody I would pay $80 a lot. Not even John Boyega, and I love him. For $80, John Boyega and Idris Elba would both have to take me out to dinner and let me have my way. <laughs> I think you have to pay a little bit more than $80 okay, for that I one. I pay, you know, I paid the fee for it. I paid the fee. I bite, I bite the bullet and pay the fee. I mean... <laughs> you're like, here's a blank check. Here's a blank check. I, Just let me know what you're going to write before you write it. I, I get you guys. And they're like, what do you mean? And they're like, I just have you. I own you. It's okay. Just like, don't, don't question it. Okay. Jedi mind trick. There it is. Um, but I think, um, you know, the Walker, well, Walking Dead fandom definitely is different from region to region. And that's all I have to say about that. Um, but I think is it? that I, I love my blurred community and what we do for for walking dead and tweeting together because it just makes it so much more open mm -hmm. and it's it's just a good time um now what are your thoughts for the episodes to come <sighs> i feel like this episode was like a balm for my soul <laughs> So if we can have the rest of the season or at least the rest of the half season take place on the kingdom and never check back with Alexandria, I would be happy. <laughs> I know that's not going to happen. So for the rest of the season, I, and I, I predict a lot of heartbreak. I had a moment. Yeah. Oh, God. So I met Walker Stalker and uh, Kaylin, the girl who plays Enid, comes on stage. I'm like, we have to see her reaction to Glenn dying. I can't do it. Like, no. <laughs> like, what is happening? I don't understand. Like, I'll... oh my god, Carol's reaction to Glenn dying? You know, Enid. Like, there's a few key characters who are going to have a really, uh, very, uh, like, it's good that episode is going to be just like him dying all over again. And I think that um, we've got a lot more to see from Rosita and Sasha. Um, so I'm excited for that. Um, but I'm not and also them telling the rest of Alexandria, it's like, you know that plan that we had where we were going to go, you know, kick ass, take names and be independent? Well, it screwed us horribly. Yeah, by the way, and now we screwed us. us. <laughs> like I brought this trouble upon us and we may all die because of it God, like, like at that point if I were like a citizen of Alexandria you know that little girl video with the little, what's her name Chloe where she's making that face like what the fuck are you talking about that would like, what, why <laughs> like what what did we do to deserve this why did we who brought him here <laughs> who asked you Rick <laughs> What's that line from Farmer Refuted? Um, uh, what is it? On Hamilton. What does he say? Yo, who the F is this? Yes! <laughs> is that? Yeah. Like. Yeah. Oh my god. It's like. <laughs> now I'm hearing. Um, like, I'm hearing Megan singing like King George's part. <laughs> goodbye. I'm gonna send a battalion to prove my love by slaughtering your entire settlement. Oh my god! Settlement. This is apocalyptic Hamilton. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's so horrible. Oh god. We gotta find a laugh somewhere. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, we got to. So I, I can't. So apparent. So we have to, in our minds, say that that he's. That Rick is is Hamilton. I don't want to give Rick the title of Hamilton. What? That's a big oh no, part. God. He's not. I don't think any of the characters fits. It's just some of the songs. Yeah, fit. I don't think character. Uh, yeah, that, yeah, you're right. 
right. Yeah. I mean, I would love to see a duel between those two. I feel like, no, it would be like Negan and Ezekiel have a duel. And <laughs> I would, that would be like the ultimate, like, showdown. It'd be really awesome. Um, I feel like Ezekiel should just sick the tiger on him and let the tiger eat him. Just like that. I don't want to. No duel. Wanna, Just let the tiger I eat him. See, Neg- see, because you know what? They're twisted. I don't want to see Negan kill an animal. I'm not there. I don't think Negan's going to kill the tiger. You know what we, we need to do? We need to throw Negan in a pit with the pigs and let the pigs eat him. Oh. Like, I don't even want him to have a quick death. I want him to have a horribly painful, ugly death. Yes. Kind of like what he did to Glenn and Abraham, you know? But with pigs. <laughs> I mean, I don't I'm still having nightmares about eyeballs popping out, so... Oh, my God. There was somebody, his cosplay was amazing. He actually took the time and did the whole full face makeup and the eye popping out, and his girlfriend was Negan. I was like, you know, by all means, do that. Not me. No, thank you. Oh, God. I also went to a con this weekend, and I saw two kids dressed up as Negan. I saw a lot of kids dressed up as Negan. I was like, I saw I saw a Harley Negan, which I was like, you know what? You're smart. Congratulations. Use the bat in a different way. Um, <laughs> but I mean, it, a, people, a lot of people like him. Um, but what was also really nice was seeing a lot of people dressed as first season Glenn with baseball oh. and baseball caps, and I was like, oh. <laughs> tribute which sucked because he wasn't on one panel at walker soccer so i was was he there he was there but no 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 panel which sucked so i was like you know okay that's the one person you kind of want to hear talk about it but i will say the michonne and carl panel was amazing like I could just watch Talking Dead with just Denai and and Chandler. Like, oh my gosh. And then what they did was really cool. They had a bunch of people that had cosplayed as Carl with one eye line up in front. And he saw it and he's like, oh my god. And I was like, it's so cute. (laughs) Like, Like, he's so adorable. Like, in person, he's just like the smallest little frail thing. And in your mind, you have to think he's not. A, a little kid anymore he's a young adult he's, but I'm like no we've been watching you since you were like baby so a little baby Carl baby Carl but they, and now he's like you know little psychotic Carl yeah, and I love him for their that. dynamic like even outside of the show is is really good so I mean there's a lot to take away from that panel too so I, I'm really excited to see more going forward from Michonne and Carl um, on the show to see their relationship after what just happened because he's going to tend since his dad is so broken in my mind he's going to have to rely on Michonne more as that mm-hmm. that that type of person for him or Carl is going to step up and become the leader of the group which is what I see him doing that's true too that is don't correct me, people who read the comics. I don't want to know. <laughs> Middle fingers. Do you, do you do not get to comment and say, well, you know what happened in the comic book. I don't care. I I really don't. You know, I read them. I'm not as far along as most people are. But, meh. Bye. So... I mean, let us enjoy it as it's happening on TV. If Game of Thrones, like, book fans can keep quiet, you guys can keep quiet, too. It doesn't hurt. Yeah, I know. I just, uh, I don't know. This will be a, like, we'll have to give a weekly reminder on these things to say, hey, by the way, we get it. Shut up. So, <laughs> that's just, that'll be what we have to do. But, um, yeah. Yeah. I think this episode was a lot easier to record after watching last week. We definitely could not have recorded after watching. <laughs> oh, so many nightmares. Oh, my God. I, it was really bad. I had a really bad nightmare, like, two Me days too. later. I was like, this is not 
not what I needed. Like I know I've like never that night. I've never been scared Ooh. of the show. I wasn't even scared. I was just so upset. I just kept seeing Glenn's like destroyed head over and over and over again. Like his eye popping out and I just I could not stop seeing it. <laughs> It was, and then it didn't help that I made chili that Sunday, and I couldn't even eat it. Like I had to put the chili in the freezer. I still can't eat it. Aww, well, I made chili today, and I could eat it just fine. <laughs> <laughs> so I ate it just fine watching the episode. I enjoyed my chili. I'm so glad I didn't make it last week like I wanted to. Never mind that it's 85 <laughs> degrees in Atlanta, and I just want to have a bowl of chili in October like a normal person. But I enjoyed it. It was really good. Mm. So, yeah, mm. next week, I'm not sure I'm going to make anything heavy to eat. Um, because we got Negan next week, and... Oh my God, I'm so sick of his face. And I've only seen it twice yeah. in two episodes. It's so hard to be sick of his face because he's so damn handsome. Like, I don't... I don't even see that anymore. <laughs> don't see anymore. It's just too... It's too much. It's too much. It's too much. Like, do not meet me in the street, Jeffrey Dean Morgan. Do not. <laughs> it's not going to end well for both of us. I feel like if he, I feel like he's got extra protection now because people are just like out for blood. Like, we're coming for you. I think that are people out for blood because a lot of people seem to still love him. You know how much fanfic is out there with like self insert yourself with Negan. Yeah. yeah. And I, yeah. Like, that's the thing, though. Like, I wouldn't want to insert myself with Negan now. I'd insert myself with Jeff, Jeffrey Dean Morgan. Yes. Yes. I mean, like, separate the man from the character, but not Negan. Like, I don't. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> I don't know about somebody's <laughs> sexual fantasy when they say, insert myself with Negan. That means you want to get to know Lucille, and I never want to get to know Lucille in that kind of way. I'm... I mean, that could be in the fic. I don't know. I don't even want to try to read it and see what's going on. God knows what's going on, but... That's why I stay off Tumblr. Tumblr has... <sighs> no. I do not want to know about your... No. No, 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 no. Your close relationship with Lucille? <laughs> oh, oh, God. There's some girl out there with a toy named Lucille now after the show. That is disgusting. Thank you so much for that insight, Mel. Okay? Hey, I didn't say anything about toys. You took it that that's much further. Big, but I'm like, that's where they took it. You know that's where they've taken it because these people are crazy. So now <laughs> that's what I'm going to go to sleep thinking about, you know? So, I mean, I guess that's what we can leave people thinking about on the podcast. By the way, <laughs> name it. This. No. <laughs> no, let's think of Ezekiel holding pomegranate and chill, people. Pomegranate and chill. Pomegranate and chill. Let's go back to the kingdom. It seems like a nicer place to be. Yeah. I'm going to go have movie night. <laughs> movie night and lunch cobbler. I want lunch cobbler. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but I want it. So gross. It's probably made with tainted meat. I don't like <laughs> you. <laughs> cobbler and lunch cobbler. I wanted to smack everybody. Like they were just so happy and well adjusted. There's a movie, and I don't know if a lot of people know it. It's called Ten Kingdom, and it was like a Hallmark movie. It's actually really good. It's one of my favorite movies. It's six hours long, but it's. Uh, I remember that movie. I own it on DVD. I watch it when I have a whole day to just waste. But there's a town, I can't remember the name of the town, where everybody's just happy. That's what I got vibes from. Like, this is very Tin Kingdom right now. And, okay. Like, if they all broke out into song and dance like a musical, I wouldn't be surprised. They basically did with that one in three beat. (laughs) (laughs) God, I want to live there so badly. (laughs) I just was so bad. I was like, who? Uh, who did this? Who, who, oh. I hope it's not a cult. It seems cultish, but like I don't want it to be a cult. I want it to be God, just they, as happy as it seems. They all end up, I want to be safe. Yeah, if they all <laughs> some really nice Nikes and drinking some punch, then I'm out. Bye. These, mm. We are not reliving this craziness. 
but I, I well, if it's cultish and we're not actually hurting ourselves, then I'm okay with that too. Okay. I want to be safe, <laughs> and it seems like a safe place. I mean, it does. I think that I think that, and from what I know from the con- I, like I said, I think it'll be good. I the only thing is you can't say anything about the comics because there's a lot of things that they don't do. So. And remember, we're not mentioning the comics. Yeah, so, I mean, by all means, uh, anything can really happen. I'm going to stay in my happy cult. (laughs) The barbershop trio is going to come out, and they're going to sing their little song while I eat my lunch cobbler. And then we're going to go have movie night. Screw those walkers. We're good. (laughs) You do that. You do that. I'm I'm Carol in this situation. I'm going to be by myself in my own (laughs) away from everyone oh my god if i was carol i would still be in the pickup truck heading to canada i don't know why nobody goes to canada (laughs) i would be gone i'd be in mexico i'm gonna live somewhere cold like the two extremes somewhere where it's snow all the time which will you know stop the walkers or somewhere where it's really hot all the time like the desert where they're just gonna shrivel up into raisins yeah, I'm, I'm Mexico seems like my place. I go visit my peoples and uh, be there, you know, because, I mean, you really want to, I mean, you know there is some Mexican drug lord, like, guns for days, and a walker has not touched anything, so. I'll oh my god, when you see some of those, the compound houses in Tijuana, Jesus, you can withstand, like, a nuclear fallout in some of those houses. Those are my peoples. This is why when Kayla goes to San Diego, I go sees my peoples in Tijuana and say, hey, anything ever go wrong, I got my backs, right? Got my backs? Compound? Nice. Good. Let's go. So, we can talk all about I'm just picturing the city filled with a bunch of emo teen walkers. <laughs> They're going to get you. The emo teen walkers are going to get you. <laughs> I can't. I really can't. <laughs> Oh, goodness. Well, I really needed this episode. Uh, it was so good. And I think that next week we'll be back. But it'll probably be a Monday night podcast because there'll probably be some stuff. It'll probably shake me. Like, they'll probably break Daryl's leg. And I don't like watching people get limbs broken. Or they'll, like, snap somebody's neck. I don't know. Something's going to happen next week. And I'm not... Oh my god, I don't want to see it. Like, I want them to pull a Glenn last season where we didn't know what happened to him for episodes. Let's do that with Daryl. Because <laughs> I don't want to know. Let's not see Daryl until the end of the season. <laughs> we can see Daryl, like, I don't know, yeah. December. <laughs> right before they go to break, that last ten minutes, Daryl's head pops up. And it's like, here he is. And then break. <laughs> Uh, God, that's what it'll be. Everyone's like, oh, and then all of a sudden it'll call, talk to, uh, cut to um, um, Chris Hardwick like, ooh, what was that? Be like, we don't know. We don't know. We don't know. Move on. Move along. We don't know. <laughs> you know what? Speaking of Chris Hardwick, I have Talking Dead on mute in the background, and he's sitting in a chair, and next to him is a man in a tiger costume with a chain around his neck holding a a bowl of fruit. And I don't know what's going on. <laughs> if that's not. It's very strange. That's not. And it reminds me of furries at con. Okay. And- <laughs> you know what? That's a great place to end the podcast. Because we're not going to get into furry con. <laughs> like when you go to Dragon Con and then you're just like, oh, furries. <laughs> oh, my word. I don't even, I can't even go there. I can't. I, I I'm not, because I don't feel like offending people tonight. (laughs) Well, they have their own, you know, parties and their own thing going on, and it's, yeah, good for them. Have your fun where you can have it. By all means, do that. Do it. I mean. I don't need to know about it. I'm good. Yeah. Right up there with bronies. Bronies, furries, you stay right there in a bubble. You're in my nerd bubble, and I don't ever need to pop it. (laughs) 
So my nerve bubble. This is such a weird episode. Oh my god. Pomegranate and chill. That's going to be my <laughs> my phrase for going back to a happy place. Yeah, you take that back. You're the one that brought up furries. So that's your fault. I brought... Well, I, I brought it's up Chris Hardwick's fault. You brought up furries. So it's been a fully packed podcast episode of these. <laughs> I feel like the, the Lucille toy was the worst. <laughs> Don't judge me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. So, oh God. thank you guys so much for tuning in again for episode two. I know this one's a little bit longer, but we were in a better mood after this one. So, yes. once again, I'm... If thankful. you listen to this whole thing, thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sorry. <laughs> if you're going to have nightmares. I know. It's, I know. it's going to be bad. But, yeah, like... Like I said, I'm Kayla. And I'm Mel. Thanks, guys. (laughs) Good night. That was a HeadGum Podcast.